Evening all, welcome back to a freaking dust video. Yes, it's me. I'm not dead. I wish I was though. I think I'm, as I start to approach middle age, dare I say, being coaxed out of my little kind of comfortable cave of, of complete ignorance to then start talking about dust. Well, it takes quite a lot to do that. Um, and the main reason I think is that as Project Nova is obviously now going to happen, maybe we should start talking about it again. Yes, this is some guy on the internet talking to other guys on the internet, because let's face it, you're all guys, there's not many women out there. And if there are, you're not really women, are you? I'm being horrible, of course. But anyway, so let's talk dust. So I have questions and I'm gonna pose them to you. You can write back to me in the comments and I will probably not read them. So it's a completely fruitless exercise, but if there's ever been a fruitless exercise, it was EVE Online, CCP Products and Dust 514. Let's begin with... Why renew dust? Well, obviously there's a market for it. There's enough people out there who have, let's say, an interest in dust. I think the simple fact that it's not died and kind of gone to its grave in a horrendous car crash of death carnage and smelly fat people then that kind of tells me that there is an interest in this kind of game so that's good let's look at dust 514 it was free to play it was on a console it was actually not terribly bad dare i say it was quite complex and i think people like complexity i think too many people browbeat and look down upon gamers they will say to themselves well gamers are stupid people you're stupid yes you you're stupid and if you haven't closed the video let me explain that they're wrong to think that because you're not stupid and this is what i would say is a key thing that gamers or gaming companies don't understand about their, their customers and their products is that actually complexity is a wonderful thing and many people do embrace it. When you look at Dust 514 it had a wonderful clever background to it which was hey let's make a game that actually means you can control the fits, you can control the weapons and then you can mess with it. That was really quite brave and I think the industry really didn't look at that. I think reviewers and the gaming press when they come to do these things they look at you know they have like a very small window to do this so what they're basically doing is they're going to come to a game um, like dust and they're going to spend 20 minutes playing it and they're going to use the prefit suits and they're going to use the auto deploy they're not going to go into the depth of it is what i'm saying so therefore they give a skewed review they say oh, it looks a bit generic therefore a score of four out of ten which is pretty much what Dust got, which I think was a travesty because if it required that kind of additional deep dive and review and, you know, deep look and open the bonnet, kick the tires, realize that there's problems with it, but also realize, hey, this thing's got a V8 in it and hey, this could be quite fun. And I think that was what they didn't do. So I can see why they're interested in renewing Dust concept but my question would now be what are their strategic goals what's their kind of plan and on to step two which is is there a market for this game so step two is there a market well <laughs> you can argue there really is because obviously there's a lot of dust players who want to play it still um, project nova will be on pc i think a lot of people have obviously transitioned to pc i don't really give a shit what you do in terms of you know are you a console gamer or are you a pc gamer i think the evidence is pretty overwhelmingly in favor of pc gaming now becoming the norm but i would happily debate that with you and i'm sure you've now completely mashed your keyboard there is a dust of cheeto dust flying in the air right now of you angrily mashing the comment section to say dude you know nothing f you well fair enough but yeah you know, i saw stuff recently that seemed to tend to suggest that really pc gaming is the way forward so you know for dust let's face it it is and i think that's where it's going to go so is there a market for it well there's all of those eve players that never really transitioned to dust i was one of those players i played eve very aggressively i was a i was somebody quite important in eve no i'm kidding i was nobody but i was still somebody who played eve first and dust second and i was somebody who went out and bought a ps3 because of it because you know obviously i'm a i'm i'm in the oil game <laughs> i have a lot of disposable income so therefore buying new things is not a problem i'm kidding i just went and bought a ps3 because i thought why not Funny enough, Josh, my good old mate Lord Joshua and Lord Porter were, were playing 
dust. And they were kind of reporting back to me saying, do you know what, we thought it would be crap. Turns out it's not, it's actually not so bad. So lo and behold, I went and bought a PS3. And I've got to admit that, I mean, you can even see those first few videos go way, way back into the kick and dust archives. Um, you need a special key. There's kind of like a golden portal, like a door, and shaped in the, in the shape of a woman's phallus, if that makes sense. Um, and what you have to do is you have to go up and knock three times and say, blah, blah, blah. I'm kidding, completely kidding. But, you know, those first few videos showed a game that actually made a lot of sense. It was fun. It was enjoyable. There was quite a lot there you could actually um, enjoy. And I did enjoy it. I had a huge kind of positive reaction playing that game. So for me, yes, there's a market. I think there's going to be a tricky, to, a tricky step to transition it to a serious market. Eve has never done that. That's a big issue with Eve, is that really the people who play Eve are the same motherfuckers who've been playing it for the last 10 years. And that's the problem. That is a major freaking problem. Now, you're probably, again, Cheeto does flying. You're going to tell me that they're not. In which case, great. But as far as I knew from certainly the last last thing I looked at was probably a year ago, um, the numbers in Eve are very steady. You know, they're very stable. And, and that's fine. But for a product, it's not. So, you know, that's an issue. So, question three. What about us bit of vets? What place will we have to play in dust? Well, we probably won't have any place. I know, get ready, you're, you're basically about to be shot in the back of the head. Those of you familiar with the Warhammer 40k uh, law will understand what I'm about to say. If you don't, then just Google Thunder Warriors. <laughs> you can see where I'm going with this if you do know what I'm talking about. Basically, the Emperor, uh, when he came to power as the supreme master of mankind in all ways, none, none you know, bar none, he decided that the only way that he was going to pave a way to a glorious future was to create something called the Thunder Warriors. And the Thunder Warriors were these genetic catastrophes of human beings. And basically they were humans, they were men, taken and turned into basically walking war machines. They were incredibly powerful, incredibly capable, um, vicious, vindictive, nasty pieces of work who thrived on warfare, thrived on killing blood and maim. Now, why am I saying this? Well, the, the end of the Thunder Warriors was that at the very end of the unification wars on Earth, the Emperor assaulting the last fortress of the last bastion of resistance against him, basically threw the entire Thunder Warrior brigades, re, you know, legions, he threw all of them at the defences of the enemy, knowing that they'd be all killed. And here resteth my analogy. Basically, that's what happened, is that the, um, the Thunder Warriors were sacrificed so that this great brand new future could be born of the Space Marines. And I think that's pretty much what's going to happen with Dust players. You know, the fact that you played this game means dick to these people. The fact that you understood Dust 514 means nada. The fact that you, you know, were an ace pro dropship pilot bra means absolutely you know bollocks all in the long scheme of things because you don't matter now for a lot of you that's going to be a difficult thing to hear because you invested a huge amount of effort into this game i'm sure you had one trillion isk and a hundred frame battle suits or some other nerdy shit that you should be ashamed of that you still pride well frankly don't care i think the best thing they could do is wipe the slate clean and start again fresh Maybe if you play Dust 514, you get a little gold nameplate when you log in. Maybe that's it. Just literally, that's all you get. And basically, that's CCP saying, well done you, like, a, like congratulating a special needs child for creating that drawing made out of their own feces in special ed. That's as good as you get, I'm afraid. So, what about the Smelly Eve players? Well... They are smelly because the last fan fest I went to, my god, personal freshness meant nothing to these people. Now, you know, some of you again may be offended by that. In which case, <laughs> go and have a freaking shower because I could not believe Trouble and I, who Trouble's a woman, right? She's an actual woman. She's not bad looking and she's quite easy on the eye. And my God, did these, these Eve players act very odd around her. <laughs> and she's not particularly an Eve person, so she didn't really understand what the hell was going on. And we were sat in the auditorium of the last or the previous last, but one Eve fest. And um, the smell hit you. 
and this was kind of like you know it was like kind of you know uh, soup cabbage soup that's been left on the boil a bit too long i don't know if you've ever cooked with garlic but after a while <laughs> the kind of pervasive smell anyway i digress I'm, I'm being a bit of a douche but basically you know what what part will they have to play well they will probably cause a lot of challenges because the way that dust players played was hey let's just have a fucking good fight Whereas EVE players, there's always going to be some ulterior motive to metagame to make themselves some STAR EMPEROR. And I think that's good, don't get me wrong, that's kind of cool, but it's going to mean some painful moments when somebody starts to, I don't know, ruin a, ruin a good round because of capture the flag or some bollocks. Because somebody's decided to metagame and decide that they're better than everybody because they've managed to trick everybody. I don't know, but there's going to be that kind of thing. So, you know, that could be could be a problem um i suspect that there's going to be an awful lot of nonsense um the thing with eve players is they get very butt hurt when they lose um that pretty much seems to be universal because people don't like losing <laughs> obviously but in dust you lose all the time don't you there's no guarantee you'll win every time so i think with this kind of fps mode a lot of people a lot of eve players will play it and then realize god they're shit at this kind of game the average age of the player who would play eve is what something like 30 something 40 something so you know their reactions are going to be about as good as grandpa joe's so quite frankly we're gonna just wipe the floor with them. I, I i say that as a challenge obviously we may not but hey who knows so it, you know it'll be interesting um i'm sure that there'll be a lot of eve players who uh, will form great united alliances and it'll be an interesting thing so it's a good thing so what about the commercial models well it's gonna have to be free to play isn't it i think that's the thing they could charge for the game and i think a lot of people would play uh, would pay for it they could use this kind of aura and bollocks where basically people just pay in-game currency but you know the, the truth is is an awful lot of eve is funded by people who who spend far too much real life money on that nonsense game and i think you know you can't have that situation in dust it has to just be free yes you could do your kind of special packages and crap like that when you look at the, just the market people like uh H1Z1 and PUBG and that, you know, I guess yes, you pay for PUBG, but you don't pay for Fortnite. And let's face it, Fortnite is is a cancer upon us all and a terrible, terrible thing. Um, one day we will tell tales of how Fortnite ruined this planet because basically it made all young people dumb, stupid and crazy and irrational and started the, the epic plague of Twitch where all of a sudden all of our young stopped desiring to be engineers, doctors, lawyers, nurses, you know, all of these wonderful worthy trades and decided they just want to become a Twitch streamer, dyed their hair a stupid colour, became emaciated and basically sat there in front of a camera saying, sup bro, thanks for that. I do worry about that and I think that's going to be a big problem. So commercial models, you know, it's just going to be a crapshoot, but I suspect it'll be free to play. Will it be successful? No, probably won't. There you go, simple really. Should we move on to the next point? Or do you want me to go through that in a bit of depth? So, you know, I'll assume you do. My view is that it won't be mega successful, but it will be it will be moderately successful. It will be something that everybody plays and gets some enjoyment from. They're not throwing a lot of money at this. They, they're using basically, you know, people and, and resources that are available to them. But they're obviously not throwing the kitchen sink at this. This is not a, an important next step for CCP. They're doing it almost as a bit of a, a design test. I suspect that everything is stage gated. So unless they hit certain stage gates, no more funding, bugger off until you do. And I think that's going to be a problem as well. I just see that being a major issue. Um, it'll be successful for the Dust players because all of a sudden we'll have this thing that's l that feels a bit like, you know, Dust 514. Almost cast your mind back to the girl at, at school, at high school that you lost or you never managed to get around the back of the bike, shed some finger. You, you know, you will be kind of having the same experience here when you're in your 30s. You're a middle manager within a call center and, you know, you're behind the bike sheds or you're behind, you're behind the pub. It's late, you've had a skinful, and uh, Marjorie from the desk across to you, who's, let's face it, big. She's big. And basically, you're, you've got your fingers in her. That's going to be what it's going to be like, I think. It's going to be slightly arousing, but ultimately disappointing. And I, think, <laughs> I hope my analogy hasn't scared you off, but I do fear it's going to be a little bit like that. 
So, who will play this game? Well, I think it's going to be a mix. I do hope that the gaming press is going to be a bit more insightful and in-depth with it. I think it's good for the content creators, so people who do um, YouTube videos and Twitch streaming. It's going to be great for you, but again, well, it's not really going to be great because you're not going to have a massive glut of people watching your stuff. Am I going to do videos? Probably, but that's because I don't need the money. I'm not relying on YouTube as actually something that needs to make money. I think those that do, and let's face it, the vast majority of Twitch and online YouTube videos or channels now rely on Patreon and you know people donating money to support them. I don't need to do that, so I probably will do videos of it, but it'll be when I have time. It'll be that kind of thing to say, you know, I like this game, it's kind of fun and I'm going to do videos of it, which is how really Dust has always been to me, let's face it. In my job as a soulless, you know, evil middle management person within a global evil empire, I don't really kind of care too much what people think or say about my YouTube channel. I don't need to sit here and do continuous content every day. I don't need to stream. My God, do I not need to stream because I think when you look into the eyes of, of streamers, you see a hell of which they have no understanding of. And I think that's the saddest thing about it all, is that too much today is reliant on this kind of content. And I really would uh, uh, you know, stress that I don't want to become part of that. So the final point, well, sort second final point. So it's tied to Eve, but why does that matter? Well, to be honest, I don't know if it does. And I, we've kind of covered that before, but let me kind of break that down into something a bit more in depth as my phone buzzes at me. I think there's something actually that they could do that would make it a much more um, enjoyable game, which is to give it a bit more meaning in EVE. And I always said things like the ability to assault a ship and put that ship in EVE into like a, a stasis phase where it can't be blown up in EVE, but it could be conquested and captured. I always thought things like that were kind of cool. Now, I also used to think that CCP was a kind of company that had the foresight capability and vision to do that sort of thing and i still think they do but it, it, it's such a pain in the ass to kind of i mean let me break it down so you know dave who's got a titan he's a twat and he's he's some kind of mouth breathing net beard kind of piece of shit and he basically has done something stupid where he's got a little bit drunk on a bottle of prosecco that his mum gave him because he managed not to overspend the allowance they give him every month and he, uh, he jumped his Titan into a stupid system or some shit. And basically, he, he, he ta somebody tackles him, he, he's put in a position where his Titan is put into, let's say, being assaulted. So then all of a sudden, you know, the Project Nova thing kicks in and then you have this fight on the Titan. And it's between his friend, the Alliance, and people who want to take it. Well, if you imagine what would happen if the Titan was stolen from him, so his pod was cracked open and he was killed, and then all of a sudden, you know, his, his innards were spread, splayed across the front of the Titan like the fat fool that he is, and then basically he was, uh, you know, he was, he was basically told, sorry, you've just lost your Titan because you're a moron. The drama, the, the ego, the anger, the bullshit that would come from that. Now, in theory, it's a fucking cool idea. In reality, it's a cool idea. In application and in in all things considered, it's a cool idea. But the problem is, is that this fat fool will not allow it. There will be this resistance from Eve players to say that's not fair, and there will be this constant challenge between what's permissible in Dust or Project Nova and what's permissible in in Eve. So there we go. So this is why we can't have nice things. We have to cater for the slowest among us. This is why we have speed limits, goddammit. It's because the stupid people kill themselves driving down the road. And that, unfortunately, is why Project Nova will have challenges. But you know what? It might just overcome them. And let's maybe hope that it does. These were the drunken, raved ramblings of a long-dead tube uh, YouTuber. A long, long dead? No, that doesn't make sense. A long extinct YouTuber. If you are interested in to hearing more, then please go to www.fuckoff. I'm kidding. Hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.